technology is changing. A lot of schools going online. There's probably a, people in here aren't aware that you can even go to a public school online the entire time. How is that changing education in Colorado? How are online schools making a difference? So overall, online schools are not performing as well academically as, as traditional brick and mortar schools. And, and there's several reasons for that. Uh, some is historical. There were some providers that were um, early into the market who weren't held rigorously accountable to standards as they came in and became charter schools or service providers to school districts and so forth. And, and frankly, they just didn't do a great job. Uh, then um, the, the other thing is a lot of these schools attract the sort of students that don't fit in well into the traditional schools. And so I work with, a, uh, with D49, we work with Goal Academy, and they're what's known as an AEC, Alternative Education Campus. And I've watched their graduations, I watched their, their, their beginning days, and, and a significant number of students there are young mothers or young pregnant girls. They're kids with parents who are imprisoned or not around. You know, they're very hard luck students. And so I'm, I'm very enthused about the opportunity that online education gives those folks. And, and to that end, my daughter, who was a professional dancer at a young age, um, entered into an online program, and it was, it was the bee's knees. It was just, it was just right for her, and, and, and she had an exceptional education all the way into high school where she trans, transitioned out. So I began something called the Colorado Digital BOCES, which is an alternative authorizer to work with online schools. And we now operate four schools, or the BOCES operates four schools, all of which are held to far higher standards than a normal charter school and certainly more than a normal online school. And I, I th so I think that's part of the future is holding them more accountable. The other part is uh, digital, you know, digital content, if you devise it into um, an in interaction in a blended way where you're working hand in glove with your schools, you know, it can just be so tremendous. And so um, my favorite school district is D49. And <laughs> we have actually um, student backpacked all of the funding to such a granular degree that if a kid in one of our, our um, charter schools wants to take AP classes at one of our traditional brick and mortars, she can do that. And then she can take online courses with the, one of the online providers, and she can do that. And we, we let her separate her bank account for education. And I think that's a big part of the future is we're going to see kids choose their own pathways. And, and to their credit, they're giving opportunities at the state board for us to explore those options. I think there's a bright future in all of this. Great. Yes, Pam. I was on the board of a charter, one of those earlier, early and large online schools, and I was so excited because I loved the curriculum. I thought this was going to be fantastic, and I was so disappointed. Uh, you know, you, just like with um, all schools, whether it's a private school, home school, online school, did I say private, public, charter, which are public schools, mm -hmm. you can't legislate high expectations in the classroom. And that's what it really all comes down to. So I saw moms that were doing school, online public schools, and they did an excellent job. An excellent job. Same with homeschoolers. I've seen homeschoolers that did a great job, and maybe, maybe you've seen some that, that mm -hmm. haven't. So, you know, it goes both ways. I've seen it in private schools, charter schools, and traditional public schools. The online situation gave um, an awful lot of freedom and nobody around to see really what was going on. Um, glad to hear there's more accountability. That's good. I, I, I'm hopeful for blended learning. We ended agreements with two providers because they didn't meet our standards already within three years. I mean, so we're holding them accountable and, and it's meaningful. That's great. That's great because the families deserve that. They don't know what they're getting into a lot of times. It is the last resort for some families and they, they, uh, they go into that and then, wow, if their kid didn't do work at the traditional school, they're not gonna do any work in the online school. Mm -hmm. Right. Can I make a comment? Yes, then. So I think there's like 42 online schools in Colorado of about 1,800 and growing. And I think one of the benefits of online education is that it can provide individualization, which is what 
Brad and, and Pam have shared. I know I talked to a high school student recently who had failed her freshman, sophomore, and junior year of high school, which is devastating. And I was encouraging her to try out an online school where they, it was a blended model where she could go to a learning center, but also quickly get into the system, get assessed, figure out exactly where she stood in the major subjects, and then begin to move through these modules. If she were in a traditional high school, I, I think that it would be very difficult for her to ever catch up. So I think these schools really do uh, serve an important service. I think the, the, the other side of that is that online education cannot replace teachers. And you can think about it as an individual yourself. If you're trying to learn something new and you get on the internet and there's a module there, you can move through it and probably maybe score 80% or something on, on questions that might be part of that module, but you can walk away still having a very shallow sense of what you're trying to learn. And that's because education is always a discourse. It's always back and forth where you're constraining meaning and trying to figure out examples and how it would apply. And if this is true, what would be the converse of that? And what's a good example of it? A host of issues that if you're getting a good education, you're asking those questions of, an, of a subject matter expert and they're able to answer it. And so, you know, we've all taken multiple choice tests and done well and walked away thinking, I hope nobody asks me to actually do this, <laughs> even though I've answered these questions correctly. And so really, like anything, this is about how good it is. But I really think blended models have far more, uh, I think they have a lot to offer just because they can incorporate that human element. We have to remember that, you know, teaching is always a personal uh, enterprise and you can't machine it and you can't, um, constrain it by small metrics and, and data points. You can do that, but it will, the sum it will always be uh, greater than the parts. Okay, so I think that's what I would say about online education. I really support it as an option, but not alone and not for all kids, and certainly having the human element inside of it is essential. Great.